This video is solving a polynomial inequality. In particular, we're looking at a quartic equation. And the quartic is x to the power of 4 plus 5x to the power of 3 plus 5x squared minus 5x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. We need to find a factor first. And we can pick the simplest one we can think of. Let's try x equals 1. And we'll use factor theorem and see if 1 gives us 0. If it does, then we found a factor. So 1 to the power of 4 plus 5 times 1 to the power of 3 plus 5 times 1 squared minus 5 times 1 minus 6. 1 to the power of 4 is 1. 1 cubed times 5 is 1 times 5 is 5. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Minus 5 times 1, that's just minus 5. Minus 6. So we'll get 1 plus 5 plus 5, that's 11, minus 5, minus 6. And sure enough, yeah, it's equal to 0. So we know x minus 1 is a factor. We'll use synthetic division. If x minus 1 is a factor, then use the 0. We're going to use synthetic division. I recommend watching a video on synthetic division if you're not familiar with it. I'm going to go quickly here. Using the coefficients of the original, 1, 5, 5, negative 5, and negative 6, and our 0 from our factor, 1. Let's start. Bring this 1 down. 1 times 1 gives 1. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. And add. This is our remainder. And so this is our constant term. These are our x's, our x squareds, and our x cubed. So we have x minus 1. When we factored that out, we were left with 1x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. And back to the original, it's greater than or equal to 0. Well, let's try and factor again. Let's start simple. You know, there could have been two factors that are the same. could have been 2, 1. So we'll try x equals 1. And remember, we're just working with this inside cubic now. That's what's left when we factor quartic once. But you'll see real quickly, 1 was a bad choice. And the reason was, all these pluses mean it's going to be really hard to equal 0. We're going to get a bunch of positive numbers. 1 cubed is 1 plus 6 times 1 squared plus 11 times 1 plus 6. You don't even have to bother calculating. It's clearly not equal to 0. I'll we'll continue up here. Let's try something negative, because we need to get some negatives in there. Let's try the simplest one. x equals negative 1. And we're subbing in just into this cubic. So negative 1 cubed plus 6 times negative 1 squared plus 11 times negative 1 plus 6. So we get negative 1 cubed stays negative, but negative 1 squared becomes positive, so it's 1 times 6. 11 times negative 1 will be negative 11 plus 6. And we get minus 1. So the minuses make, yeah, this is perfect. Minus 1 plus 6 is 5. Take away 11. Negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. So we found a factor. We got lucky with this negative 1. It worked. So x plus 1 is a factor. And we're going to factor the cubic that we had back here. So we use negative 1 with synthetic division on that cubic. The cubic was 1, 6, 11, 6. Synthetic division. Start by bringing down the 1. Multiply. Add multiply, add, multiply, and add. This is our remainder, which is good. That means it worked. This is our constant. These are our x's. These are x squared. So we have, from the original, the x minus 1, from this one, an x plus 1, and we're left with x squared plus 5x plus 6. That should be, let's write down the greater than or equal to 0, that should be easy to factor because we're just looking for what multiplies to 6 and what adds to 5. What multiplies to 6 adds to 5, that's 2 and 3. And so we're done factoring. We'll have 
x minus 1 times x plus 1, and we factored this quadratic just by using the Bergman MAM technique, and we're left with x plus 2 and x plus 3, which is greater than or equal to 0. Put this in a box here. Let's identify what the zeros are here. And I'll do them in order. Start with this one. The zeros could be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, or 1. And so to solve this inequality, that is, we're trying to find where is x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0, we're going to look at the zeros, make an interval table, and our solutions will solve the original. This is just the factored form of the original. So I think I'll do it over here make an interval table. So interval, sign, it's going to be a bit squishy here, but hopefully it'll still work. Interval table, sign. And so we've got our list of zeros, so we want to check before the first zero, x is less than negative 3, and then between the first two zeros, so x is between negative 3 and negative 2, and then between the second two zeros, x is between negative 2 and negative 1, and then between negative 1 and 1, and finally when x is greater than the last 0. And we're going to sub in to this equation here. So, we'll start with something less than negative 3. Pick a really negative number like negative 100. If you put a negative 100 in these brackets, you'll get a negative, a negative, a negative, four negatives. Neg, neg, negative, negative, and four negatives multiplied together gives a positive. I'm writing little minuses here. It might be hard to see. I'm going to do the same for the next interval. I've got to pick something between negative 3 and negative 2. So let's say negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 in that first bracket gives you a negative. In the second bracket, negative 2.5 is a negative. A negative 2.5 in there. Ah, negative 2.5 plus 2. Nope, still negative but negative 2.5 plus 3 makes a positive. So we'll have three negatives times a positive, so two will cancel out, but it stays negative. Between negative 2 and negative 1, all right, let's pick negative 1.5. That makes this one negative. And negative 1.5 in here is still negative, but negative 1.5 plus 2 is a positive. And same with this one, negative 1.5 plus 3 is a positive. So we have two positives and two negatives. Two negatives make a positive. So we'll have three positives. They all multiply to be positive. All right, we're doing well. Got two more intervals between negative 1 and positive 1. So let's try 0. A 0 in this bracket, 0 minus 1 is a negative. But 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, and 0 plus 3 are all positives. So you get pos, positive, and positive. Three positives and a negative multiply together makes negative. And the last interval, something bigger than 1, you can pick anything. You can pick 2, but I'm just going to pick a big number like 10. 10 minus 1, 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2, 10 plus 3, they're all positive. You'll get 4 positives, and positive times positive times positive times positive. Anytime you're multiplying all positives, you get positive. So the end of this question, from here we went up and did our interval table. And now we'll finish off. We want to figure out where was the original greater than or equal to 0 which is where is this equation greater than or equal to 0. Well, it was these intervals here where it was positive. That's bigger than or equal to 0. So the solution is and we'll write down our intervals. x could be less than negative 3. x could be between negative 2 and negative 1. Or x could be greater than 1. Last thing, go back to the original equations and realize not only could you be between the zeros, you could also be equal to the zeros. So x could be less than or equal to negative 3. x can be greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to negative 1. Or x could be greater than or equal to negative 1 or positive 1. And that is our solution.